Good evening, everyone. Thank you all so much for coming. What a fantastic turnout. My name is Peter Leach. I'm president of North Shore Studios and the chair of the Motion Picture Production Industry Association. And I get to talk a little bit later in the program. I, I want to welcome all of you to stage seven here. It's heartening to see the overwhelming response here tonight. So thank you very much and give yourselves a hand. <laughs> Many of us from across the industry have been working on industry issues together for some time now, many years for many of us, uh, to varying degrees of success, as you may know. Our clout and our story are strongest when we act together, with as many of us behind the message as possible, and this is a great showing on that tonight. It's very encouraging to see everyone here. We will run a tight agenda for this meeting tonight to provide you with the most concise information and action plan that we can, and we're really looking forward to the question and answer period at the end of this. Um, as well, the background is based upon, and we want to get as much feedback, um, which is really important for us, uh, as possible. That means giving you some history and future vision before we get to the Q&A, uh, which is why it's apropos to have Jackson Davies here to take us through the paces tonight. Most of you know Jackson. Uh, he's been part of the production industry since its infancy here. In fact, I think Jackson, since my infancy, you've been part of the industry. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, I meant Crawford. Uh, he's played a leading role in our history as one of BC's most prolific actors, and he's also leading future generations of industry professionals teaching at Capilano University. So thank you, Jackson, and welcome as our MC tonight, Jackson Davies. Thank you, Peter. Jesus, this is impressive. Really, from up here, you will not believe this. This is just, just spectacular. As, uh, a couple of quick messages, please. Stop drinking water. Uh, there's only like a nine-hole bathroom just out in front of that door. Uh, so, you know, be, uh, take care of yourself. Now, as someone, as someone who has been in this, uh, involved in the BC film industry f uh, since 1962, please, God, don't do the math, I am so impressed with this, uh, with this turnout tonight. It's uh, to, for us to get together and, and willingness to act together for, on a plan for the industry and the future of BC. So here we are, stage seven at North Shore Studios. A, a lot of you have probably worked here at, at one time or another. It's, uh, it's been a while for me. Uh, I just do auditions now, but uh, <laughs> been a while. I uh, Actually, uh, the last movie I auditioned for is now on Netflix, which uh, Tells you how long ago it was. <laughs> you know, even though my studios were, uh, were boats and cop cars and, and cafes, we did have the most beautiful back lot set in the world. You've probably heard about it, British Columbia. But still, there is, a, there is a sense of magic for actors when they, uh, when they go to a studio. It's like you become a grown-up actor. And actually, you know, you can get in these buildings, and if you listen very carefully, you can hear the voice of X-Files' David Duchovny saying, Who's got my umbrella? <laughs> Sorry, that was a joke for the 90s, for the people who were in their 90s. So if it wasn't this stage, uh, then maybe you worked uh, one of the other seven stages here, or. Uh, or the, the one of 10 at uh, Vancouver Film Studios, or the eight at, at the bridge, or the 11 at the Canadian Motion Picture Park, or maybe you worked at Mammoth. Unfortunately, one of the reasons we are gathered tonight is that it's been pretty quiet here and, and in BC lately, uncomfortably quiet. I was at a meeting here on Friday and I actually had my choice of parking spots. That has never happened before at this studio. 
We have some of the best studio f infrastructures in North America, and we also have some of the best crews and talent. I take that back. We have the best crews and talent. We have actors, actors, stunt performers, producers, directors, post, visual effects, and animators, and let's not forget some of the best international recognized education and training facilities. And actors. Oh, did I mention actors? I guess I did. And honestly, the list does go on, and we have it all here. But we also know very well that we are not the only ones competing for the international and Canadian production business. While at the same time, we're trying to develop and create our own BC productions where we own the projects. Now, that's not easy. There is not a lot of that Canadian development money that ends up out in BC. I personally feel that Canadian taxpayers, uh, BC isn't getting a fair share of, of Telefilm, CBC, the Canadian Media Fund, as well as that almost $1 billion benefit package from the sale of broadcast networks. I think we earn, we should deserve a better share of that money. But you know, th there are people in BC that are getting it done. As an industry, we've pushed through a lot in the last couple of years. The, the challenges around the Olympics, the, the Canadian dollarizing, the industrial tax policy that just isn't keeping us in contention. But in spite of all the challenges, there is no disputing the fact that we have earned considerable success in this business. And we have built a motion picture production industry in BC that everyone here tonight and across the province can be proud of. Yeah. You know, so tonight we filled up North Shore Studios to, to talk about the future of the industry. Now, thousands of you have signed a petition asking for the government's help, and the industry is getting together in unprecedented numbers, both here tonight and in other forms, to come together on a strategy. We need a plan, a collective plan that everyone across the industry can get on board with, and we need a strategy that industry and government can implement together. And guess what? We need it now, because right now, the world over, businesses and government leaders are acting on their own strategies to capture and build this industry because it's a great business to build. It's clean, it's knowledge, talent, and, and technology driven, and it spins off economic benefits to almost every imaginable supply chain. We can't, we, we can't afford to debate the merits of BC film production industry and, and whether it's, it's worth the effort we know for sure that this is a multi-billion dollar industry, and it's one we are very good at. Yeah. You know, we are losing territories as we speak, so the time for talking is short, and I'll move forward on that note. As Peter has said before, there, there will be a, a question and answer period later. Now, we've assembled some industry representatives here to, tonight to talk to you about what's been happening, what's been done in the past, and what they and we think needs to happen from going on forward. I'll introduce them uh, to you now. From, of course, from North Shore Studio and uh, with MPA, you've already met Peter Leach. From Omnifilm, and he's also the uh, chair of the Canadian Media Production Association, BC Producers Branch, Brian Hamilton. <laughs> IATC, IATC 891, Paul Klassen. <laughs> From William F. White, Garen Josie. <laughs> and Entertainment Partners Canada, Cheryl Nex. And our first speaker, uh, the production manager, Wayne Bennett, speaking on behalf of Save BC Film. Wayne. Good evening. And uh, firstly, thank you all for coming. Uh, the last 10 days have been, hazard to say, a whirlwind. Um, First of all, I just have to thank everybody that, that came together from our unemployed film community <laughs> to help put this event together. Um, thank you. Uh, 
from lighting to grip to camera to cranes to balloon lights to truss. Everything in this building tonight is from a supplier in the film industry. And it was all free and donated by every person who owns this equipment. So thank you to all those vendors. This is just a sample of the infrastructure. When I've been on the radio in the last little while and we all say in excess of $1 billion, well, what does that mean? It's this stuff. It's all this stuff. It's this building. It's Vancouver Film Studies. It's CMPP. It's all these things that build into the infrastructure that creates British Columbia as a place to come and do business and to work and to film. I don't claim to be anything more than any of the rest of you. I'm just an unemployed film worker who wants to work more. And we're all here in the same common goal to try to persuade our government and future governments that this industry matters and means something. That it, we're not a flash in the pan, that 20 years, 30 years, however many people, we won't speak to Jackson, um, <laughs> that we want to continue to evolve and build and grow. What's the point of educating people at these 24 facilities or in this province if they've got to go to Ontario, Quebec, and other places around the world to actually earn a living? That said, I find myself kind of trying to marry all of us through social media and Save BC Film and Twitter and MPA to try to figure out how we as a community, as a family, can work together to work together to keep this industry here and to keep it strong and to keep it moving forward. A producer production manager friend of mine came to my wedding and spoke at my wedding and said, there's the Bennett family, there's the Baldner family, and then there's the film family. <clears throat> So now, a little bit of history in the short 10 days that this has evolved, and for those of you who are not on Facebook, Twitter, or all the other social media, I just got to fill in some blanks of how this kind of all erupted. It started with two people talking. It started with Lee Cleary and Fiona Winning talking about what is Christy Clark and that government doing for our industry. They started it. They started talking on Facebook. And then one other person named Patrick Stark, who's not even really in the business anymore, but loves everybody here as part of our extended family, took that and started moving it along. And those friends told two friends, and those two friends, and those two friends told 4,400 people have liked our page, 6,700 people are talking about that page, and our reach weekly is over 135,000 people that have reached, that are talking about what we are talking about. You cannot discount social media and the power of the people. We have a voice. We are going to be heard, and we're going to be heard loudly. The Facebook, the, the, the call to action at that particular time was for people to go to the Premier's Facebook page and post comments about how we are unemployed and how we've been neglected by the BC Jobs Plan. And those mounted to 400 posts by Saturday morning of the Friday a week ago. By late Saturday morning, 400 posts were deleted. Without answer, without comment, without redirection, with nothing. By the end of Saturday, we were close to 800 posts that had been put on that site and again deleted. By the Sunday morning, we were still posting and reposting and they were deleted, and then people that were trying to repost were being blocked, either by Facebook or by the people that are administering that page on behalf of the government. Our premier claims that she wants to hear from us. Go to her Facebook page. It's written right there in the line. She wants to hear from us. Well, we tried. 
We tried. We were not rude. We were not belligerent. We were not indignant. We were crying for help and pleas of help. And we were dismissed, and that's not right. <clears throat> After that fiasco, two people took up another cause. Let's create our own Facebook page. So people in our industry can go, if they're on Facebook, and actually share their thoughts, share their ideas, communicate with each other, talk about it without the fear of being deleted, and God help me if I say this, censored. Because that is what was happening on that governmental web page. Matt Tingey, Sandra Montgomery created Save BC Film on that Facebook page. <laughs> And then you throw in another one, and an AD you, most of you may have known over the years, Mr. David Markowitz, who the, took on the task of tirelessly maintaining and monitoring post after post after post after post to make sure we were being civil, professional, and above all, respectful of one another, of the government that somebody elected, Wasn't me either, Sharon. <laughs> to make sure that we were all being respected and heard. And as I said, that page is over 4,500 likes, 6,800 people talking about it. And in excess, I'm throwing this out here because yesterday it was like 80,000. We're probably over 100 threads of information and posts and whatever have gone through that Facebook page in 10 days. 100,000 posts and reposts and conversations and, and shares and likes in 10 days. That doesn't happen every day. So there's the power of post social media with the passionate backing of just a few thousand people. We handed out bumper stickers tonight. We had 2,000 of them. We had 2,000 of the postcards. Those were gone, so there's at least 2,000 people, if not more, in this room, let alone what's in stage one as a, hello, stage one, um, a live feed. So that's how many people are unemployed, and that's how many people in this building directly care about this industry and care about it moving forward and want to see us succeed. The outpouring of support then started the Avaz Save This, this petition, our petition, which eclipsed 25,000 at some point today. Sadly, some people only signed with their first name. Some people signed with no name. So let's take out 10%. So we're, you know, still over 24,000 people, again, in 10 days. And that's people through Facebook, through Twitter, and that's people reposting it to their email accounts with people that aren't on Facebook and Twitter, and people in our extended families trying to help us save our careers and our livelihoods. That 24,000 on that petition is a number large enough to show that we cannot be ignored and we're not going to be ignored and the politicians need to hear us and need to recognize that we matter. 16 days, sorry, pardon me, 16 weeks today there is a provincial election. Our numbers are going to be counted again, and we need to make those numbers count. $17.7 billion has been spent in this province since 1986. The tax incentives came in in 1998. We brought a lot of business here, made a lot of movies, made a lot of friends. We want them to keep coming back. So how do we do that? Well. We will hear from MPA tonight as to their goal, their vision, and what we have to do is form a one voice. We have to have one solid voice that says to our government, with all of us and our handy little computers and our smartphones and everything behind us and our Facebook and our Twitter and our StumbleUpon and all the other social medias to support this group moving forward to tell our government that this is what we need to do. 
I find it extremely hard to understand why our government so easily dismisses our concerns and so easy to understand why thousands of people whose livelihoods are tied to this industry, that we're not big rich producers from Hollywood, that we're not, the tax credits are not paying for, you know, Brad Pitt's million dollars to come here or whatever the heck he makes. It's a little bit more than that, I'm sure. <laughs> we need to educate the public. We need to educate our MLAs. We need to educate our ministers. We need to educate our premier, whichever party that may be. It's also hard to understand how 37 U.S. states, 10 provinces, I believe it's 10, might be 9 now, poor Saskatchewan, and other countries in the world see the value of investing in this industry. New York today just announced a five-year extension to their tax credit program. They invest $420 million a year. The numbers I've been hearing from the government all week long have been anywhere between it cost the taxpayer 200 to our friend at the Vancouver Sun, 325 million. Does anybody know what the net that might be? That's the gross number. Nobody knows what it actually costs if the government's even making money. They may be making money off our industry, yet nobody seems to know. But other countries, there's studies done, there's reports in magazines, there's reports in trades papers that all say the economic impact, the economic benefit of this industry is massive. People use two times a multiplier, three times a multiplier. I got reports from Langley, the township of Langley. They had 561 days of shooting in their township, Little Langley, in 2011. This industry spent $24 million in that industry, in that city. They estimate their economic effect three times that, $68.02 million. They paid off debt with that money. So essentially, maybe we are doing something wrong here. Maybe we, and maybe it's not all the government's fault, maybe we as a community need to educate. We need to tell people, your, your, your deli owner, your bakery owner, your, you know, people that y you walk down the street and go, oh yeah, I work in the film industry, and they're like, oh, you're sucking my taxpayer dollars. Yeah, well, no, really, we're not. Because what, again, everybody fails to realize is that we pay into that system that they're shelling out of. And they don't seem to recognize that. <laughs> so even though we are struggling right now, our industry is one of BC's great economic successes. Again, $17.7 billion since 1986. That's nothing to laugh at. That new pipeline that they're talking about building, it's going to generate about $1.2 billion over 20 years. $1.02, that's kind of one year for us. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so, as we are leaving here tonight, not yet, because there's other people to speak. <laughs> we need to figure out how to capture the energy that's been created and surrounds the Save BC Film campaign, if you will, in, in our industry. Push it behind MPIA going forward. Every labor organization is represented at MPIA, therefore, by extension, we are represented at MPIA. And we need to get behind them to support the government, or to support our mission statement to the government about what we need to do to survive. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your support. I thank you for all your ideas, all your great ideas, all which, my God, I'm one person. I can't even think about how to put them all together into one big document because everybody's got great ideas and great positions and opinions. And that's the one thing we can't forget. And 
the one thing we can never, ever, ever forget is everybody's opinion, whether we agree with it or not, matters. And get to your MLAs, get to them hard in the next 16 weeks for this election, and let them know how many people work in this industry in their riding. North Vancouver, West Vancouver, Richmond, everywhere. Let them know that you work in this industry and you want to see it succeed. And we need to move forward and just keep together as one. That said, thank you again. And I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Leach. Well, thank you so much, Wayne. Um, he's put so much work into this. He, uh, he was, you know, one of the first ones to volunteer and say, Peter, I'll, I'll help put this all together. And, and he's, him and his team organized this. So thanks again, Wayne. That's fantastic. <clears throat> I would also like to thank my, all my colleagues at MPIA, uh, fellow MPIA members, who have worked tirelessly to build the industry in British Columbia. For those not familiar with MPIA, the Motion Picture Production Industry Association, I'd like to give you some background. We were formally established in 2002 as a membership-driven, non-profit industry association after industry representatives gathered informally on industry issues for several years in a cooperation with the BC Film Commission as a community marketing group. MPIA is a diverse organization with 130 members, including all the film industry labor unions and guilds, the CMPA, BC Film Commission, the BC Film, as well as producers, suppliers, and other industry stakeholders. We leave our individual agendas at the door and work together on issues to benefit the overall industry. MPIA has built a respectful and positive relationship with government partners at all levels over the years and engages the provincial government on a regular basis to keep them apprised of industry conditions. We are a nonpartisan organization and have engaged all parties in dialogue to inform them of the tremendous benefits of this industry to the province in terms of employment and contribution to the economy. I am proud of what we have accomplished together building a low-impact green industry employing over 25,000 highly skilled British Columbians with private sector investment of a billion dollars that contributes between one and two billion dollars to the economy. And uh, as you can see here, most of the talent is in the audience and not up on the stage, that's for sure. And thank you for coming. Thanks to all of you for your contribution to the success of this industry. Our work to build this industry is not done. I remember the day in 2009 when Quebec went to the all spend model and Ontario matched the following week. I knew this was going to be a challenge not only for the industry but for government policy. While we have some great natural advantages including time zone, a world of looks, great crews, cast and infrastructure, the tax credit differential with a rising dollar was going to impact us. The decision in Ontario was based on a creative sector strategy supported by Richard Florida's report on the benefits of the creative economy. It is a compelling report and outlines many of the reasons why this is an industry well worth supporting. We went into a seven month study at that point in time with government to negotiate uh, um, with representatives resulting in an increase in existing labour tax credits in 2010. The differential in the tax credit advantage that Ontario and Quebec still ended up with was approximately 10%, which is a significant number. I was actually surprised to see us sustain the level of production these past two years that we, that we have. The numbers, as reported by government um, in 2011, were actually quite decent. And I expect the numbers that are going to be reported in 2012 um, where we started off relatively strong but tailed off in the last quarter, uh, they're probably not going to look all that bad either. One of the big problems is, is we saw this tail off, we knew it was coming, and now we're faced with um, what looks like a pretty scary 2013. 
Ontario and Quebec saw increases in production and employment, including projects that would normally have landed in British Columbia. Our numbers with a level playing field for 2011-2012 would definitely have shown significant growth. The last quarter of 2012, as I said, uh, was slow. Um, we had empty sound stages, growing unemployment. And as our customers in Los Angeles told us in our November meetings, um, they told us they loved working here. They said, this is one of the favorite places to come. We make it easy for them. All of you make it easy for them by the quality of the work and the ease of uh, what it's like to work in British Columbia. But the problem was your tax credits weren't close enough. It was a scary message because it was told very sincerely uh, by some of our major customers. There was also serious concern about the PST returning, uh, which would make the differential VAP much larger. This slide in work was alarming for us, and, a result, and, and as a result, MPA has taken action. We set up a number of meetings with government, including our minister, Bill Bennett, who we actually met with earlier tonight. So thank you, Minister Bennett, for, for showing up. Thanks for meeting with uh, industry representatives and, and uh, being very candid with us. We also met with the finance minister and we've met with the premier. So we haven't been sitting around. Um, we've been taking these meetings, we have been engaged. Um, and we've also moved forward to design a campaign to outline and celebrate the benefits of the industry, including the substantial employment, economic impact and investment. Earlier, we had commissioned studies to get accurate and timely numbers to support government's investment and the return on that investment, including economic impact and job creation. We were a little bit stymied on these reports because when we got to the level of BC stats, we found out that the methodology of their measurement didn't really make any sense. We looked at reports from around North America and that's the type of report we've tried to emulate. Um, we've hired a consulting firm. We've got a report done. Uh, we're working on the methodology to make sure it's consistent with other provinces and hopefully that'll be out quickly because that was the first thing on the agenda with uh, Minister Bennett today, is making sure we have consistent measurement um, to show the economic benefits of this industry. We hear time and time again about how much this industry costs government, but the benefits they get, not only from tax dollars and economic spin-off um, and employment and infrastructure, um, but this is a fantastic industry that's got huge growth potential. Everyone's got a screen, everyone's looking at content. Nobody produces content better than the group in this room right tonight. In the meantime, Ontario and Quebec have taken advantage of their larger incentives to build more infrastructure and to build on their human capital. This additional capacity is now a real threat we are facing in 2013, and that is why it is essential, and that is why it is essential that we have this meeting now and are becoming vocal now. If we lose production, we will lose infrastructure. It will not return, and I can tell you right now, we, as North Shore Studios and Mammoth Studios, we are committed to be in this industry as long as we can. Um, my boss, Nat Boza, made a big contribution to Capilano University Foam Program. We support the Templeton High School Program. And many other suppliers here give back to this industry. So we're, we're in this for the long term, and we hope that government's in this for the long term also. We can't afford to be sidelined as a result of Ontario and Quebec tax policy. This is an industry where we excel and are world class. It doesn't make sense to lose it. This is an industry that all of you, including government, have worked too hard to build up to let go. The creative sector must be part of the BC brand, something that all British Columbians are proud of, an industry where thousands go to work every day in this province. So here's our ask to government. We acknowledge that we do have advantages in British Columbia. And based on our recent discussions, especially with our customers in Los Angeles, we just need to come close. They said, we don't need to match. We don't have to be right there. We don't have to participate in this so-called race to the bottom. 
We just need to be close. We just need to be competitive. If we are, we're going to win out every single time. The other thing that we're asking for, we've got the PST coming back April 1st. We've asked for the manufacturing exemption, which means we get a deduction for PST like any other manufacturer in the province, like Ontario did. like Ontario did when they had PST. Of course, they've gone to HST. And all we're asking there is a level playing field with other industries in British Columbia. For our part, the industry will invest in infrastructure, invest in training, give back to the community like, give back to the community like we all have, support our educational facilities, and provide jobs for those talented graduates of film and television programs in the future so they can build a career in this industry like we have and continue to build a world-class creative sector in British Columbia. So tonight, we ask all of you engaged in the industry to tell your story about the benefits of this industry in the province. Tell it to your friends and colleagues, members of city council, MLAs, MPs. Your voice has already made a difference. I would like, I'd now like to return the mic over to Cheryl Nix, president of EP Canada, who works with the numbers on a daily basis and is Canada's largest film and television payroll service company. Cheryl. So thank you, Peter, and thank you all for coming tonight. What an impressive turnout. Over the past few days, we've heard concerns that employment levels are approaching 90%. Uh, there's no question that far fewer of us are working today compared to this same time last year. We accountants try to use the past to predict the future, and we try to do this. We, read, we try not to read too much into a single snapshot. What we try to do is we look for trends, and when we look for those trends, we look to a few months. And we, when we look at the first quarter of 2013, that being January, February, and March, I certainly am predicting that we will be down at least 40% from last year. And I have no doubt that the absence of feature films through 2012 and the numerous television series that have just come to their natural end and or been cancelled are a cause for concern. Peter spoke moments ago about the competitive challenges that we face, specifically the Foreign Production Services Tax Credit in Ontario and Quebec offers an additional 10% to a production filming there. Adding to that competitive challenge is the provincial sales tax that will return on April the 1st. A combination of the tax credit differential, the tax incentive differential is probably a better way to refer to it, and the return of the provincial sales tax will put us behind by 12 to 13 percent. And for many decision makers, the folks that Peter spoke about that we visit on a regular basis in Los Angeles, to them this gap is very attractive and too big to overlook. Over the years, the provincial government has been an important partner to our industry at maintaining a level playing field. Because of this, the film and television industry has tripled in size in British Columbia since the mid-1990s. Today, there are 25,000 people employed in our industry. Collectively, they contribute 1.8 billion in GDP to our, to our annual economy here in British Columbia and attract over 1.5 billion in inward investment. More than a billion dollars is invested in infrastructure. There are 24 recognized institutions for industry training, turning out hundreds of talented and very driven graduates hoping to work in this industry. Even more compelling, according to a Price Waterhouse study and supported by a Simon Fraser study, the creative economy in British Columbia tops $4 billion and employs 85,000 people across all the creative industries. These are very convincing numbers. These are the kind of numbers that have inspired other jurisdictions to aim for and exceed what we have achieved. Here in British Columbia, despite our efforts, we are just not getting it done. We haven't demonstrated enough unity in our message, so we haven't made a case for further investment and planning on the part of government. 
and we aren't working closely enough with government the way we believe we should on a strategic plan that will help us capitalize on new opportunities in the screen-based industries. I think it's really important for us to recognize that the British Columbia government has historically been behind our industry and pro provided us with very robust tax incentives. But we need to look at our position in today's global competitive landscape to assess our current effectiveness. I echo Wayne's recommendations to gather and unify behind a collective industry message and positive strategy. Join Ampia and engage with your sector representative at our table. Communicate with your government representative <clears throat> excuse me, both on the challenges and realities of our industry. Talk about our wins. Talk about how our industry impacts you and your family. Get to know your industry organization, Empia, and how you can work together with us. Tonight we're joined by Brian Hamilton, principal and executive producer of Omni Film Entertainment and chair of the BC Producers branch of the Canadian Media Production Association. The CMPA is a key member of AMPIA and a pivotal production organization representing the BC-based employers in our industry. Like AMPIA, the CMPA is dedicated to a strong and sustainable future for the production industry in British Columbia and has already articulated a vision and strategy for the creative industries in this province. I turn it over to Brian to tell you a little more. Brian? Thank you very much, Cheryl. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you, Peter. I am overawed by the presence of everyone here and the power of a few voices having started and what they have already accomplished. So congratulations, and uh, I'm very privileged to be here. One of our most important jobs at the CMPA is government lobbying. and. So I'm one of those folks who have gone on the trips to Victoria to meet with the ministers, senior government staffers. I've done presentations in front of many committees, including the group that oversees and determines the provincial budget. I've helped write and edit briefing notes and recommendations targeting the center of power of the government, and that is the Ministry of Finance. And I've spent lots of time talking to producers and other stakeholders about how to best to make our case. Before I was on the BC CMPA board, I distinctly recall having a vague sense of frustration and confusion about how the film and television industry didn't seem to be getting what it wanted from the provincial government. Who was speaking for us? What were our representatives saying? And what were they asking for? And why didn't the government see the wisdom in increasing its support for the film and TV industry in general? So obviously I can completely understand and appreciate the passion and sentiment behind the recent online campaigns and petitions. These are extremely tough times for our industry, and I recognize that. People like Peter and myself and Cheryl, who are actively involved in government lobbying on an ongoing basis, so benefit when there's an active outpouring of ideas and emotions like we're experiencing right now. It makes the media and the government sit up and take notice and reminds everyone how many families and livelihoods depend on a healthy film and television business in British Columbia. So once again, thank you for all, to all those who've participated and continue to participate in the awareness campaigns. We need you, we need your ideas, and we need your passion. And as Wayne said, thank you. as Wayne said, and, and Cheryl and Peter emphasized as well, we need to speak with one voice. Because if we're all using different statistics and asking for different solutions, the government is going to throw up its hands and do nothing because, as they say, the stakeholders can't even agree amongst themselves. So I'd like to share with you what the CMPA has been doing in the area of lobbying, the provincial government, and also the official opposition on behalf of our industry, and in particular, our members who are the producers and production companies here in BC. Since the infamous all spend decisions in 2009, we've seen several campaigns here in BC asking the BC government for higher tax credits. And although the specific requests may have varied slightly, the message is largely the same. In order to level the playing field with other jurisdictions, read Ontario, tax credits should rise. This will increase jobs and benefit the BC economy. What a no-brainer. How come it hasn't worked?
Although these are obviously valid arguments, hello, so far at least, none of these campaigns have achieved the de desired result. Just last week, Christy Clark repeated what we've often heard before, that we can't engage in a race to the bottom and the province can't afford higher tax credits. So I would suggest as long as government and the public looks at us as one of dozens of special interest sectors asking for more handouts, our prospects are bleak. Nonetheless, other jurisdictions with even greater financial challenges than BC are continuing to offer much more attractive incentives than here in BC. Why is this? Well, I would suggest that it's not about just the numbers. It's about a grand vision that we seem to be working towards but haven't fully articulated. We don't have it quite yet. Our, our colleagues in the other provinces have done a better job than we have convincing government and the public about the importance of what we do and why a vibrant film, television, digital, gaming, creative sector is so important to the future of our province. So over the past couple of years, the CMPABC has evolved our message away from simply focusing on preventing jobs from leaving the province towards a positive vision for the future. We still consistently re support the particular asks that Peter described, but they're part of a big positive vision instead of a oh no message. What is our vision? Simply put, it's the growth and potential of BC's creative economy. This is a good news story, folks. Last spring, the CMPA BC collaborated with other representatives of the creative economy, the digital media and gaming sectors, the music sector, the book and magazine publishers. We released a report on the importance of BC's creative industries to the economy. The conclusions were very powerful. As Cheryl mentioned, we account for more than $4 billion every year injected into the BC economy, 85,000 jobs. Now, those numbers might seem you know, big and impressive, but how do they compare? Well, actually, they are very similar indeed to the oil, gas, and mining industries combined. Very similar indeed to the tourism sector, also in the $4 billion range. Also, very similar to the forestry sector. What do the, all those other sectors have in common? They have their own government ministries, hundreds of employees looking after their sector and making sure that their, their industry's benefits are known and that they're looked after by government. Where is our ministry? You know, and something we have, I would say, on a, a number of those sectors is not only are we already a hugely significant part of the economy, but the demand, both provincially and more importantly, globally, for what we do is growing rapidly, faster than almost any other economic sector. The op opportunities here for our creative industries to grab a bigger share of a growing pie. This vision for a vibrant and growing creative economy is one that has the potential to excite our politicians who are looking for ways to evolve our province away from over-dependence on resource extraction and raw materials. We are the future. And another reason for the politicians to sit up and take notice, the jobs we offer are very appealing to the next generation and their voter parents and grandparents. We offer rewarding high wage green jobs and in some cases employees can even telecommute to these jobs from far away regions. Not necessarily if you have to work in Studio 7, but if you happen to be in VFX or animation, that's possible. So other jurisdictions are ahead of BC, obviously. Ontario, many years ago, put in place the Ontario Media Development Corporation to promote all of those that province's creative industries as an interrelated sector. The appeal of creative industries to Ontario is, is obvious when you consider their declining manufacturing sector. And that's a big reason why, at a time that Ontario is slashing subsidies to all sorts of industries and legislating their teachers back to work. Does that sound familiar, anyone? The OMDC, the Ontario Media Development Corporation, has been spared any cuts. Their budgets are intact because their government believes in the grand vision. We believe that the same grand vision buy-in could and should happen here in BC, so that our own BC Media Development Corporation would be established. 
With that would come a much higher profile influence in government, regardless of which party is in power, actually. This entity would be charged with coordinating and strengthening government support across all ministries so that the creative sector has a one-stop shop to understand and address our needs. This new creative industry's focus would bring more of a spotlight onto film and television. This level playing field that we all talk about would then be considered not just as, as a specific industry ask, but as part of an entirely larger vision. We'd be a key part of one of the government's top economic priorities. And that's what I call an appealing vision, and we can get there. Politicians from both major parties are already beginning to express support for this idea. If we do our job right, if we send in enough postcards, we put enough posts up on Facebook, the creative industries will be a plank in each party's May election platform. So I'd like to join my fellow presenters in inviting all of you to come on board and support the vision of a vibrant creative economy that BC, in BC that has film and television as a key pillar. When you communicate with government or media, or just in your neighborhood, in your schoolyard, when you go into your local shop, let people know that you're proud to be in this industry and how important this industry is to our province. At our company, Omni Film Entertainment, we are extremely optimistic about the future. From a high-level strategy point of view, we assume that our clients will always be able to find less expensive suppliers. So therefore, we need to excel in quality and in customer service. We're not the cheapest, but clients choose to work with us anyway. And many other BC companies are succeeding the same way. This ability across the BC film and television sector to provide high quality and exceptional service is the reason that despite the economic factors weighing against us, despite the uneven playing field, projects are still getting made. People are finding a way. It's not easy. All of us recognize that. We wouldn't be holding this event if, if we didn't. But in the short term, there isn't any other way forward. And when we come to a time when the pendulum swings back in our direction, because it will, and we have tailwinds instead of headwinds, our industry will be all the stronger and more resilient because of what we're living through now. Thank you, everyone. I'd like to just hand over to Garen and Paul. Thanks, everyone. The two of us are going to introduce you to uh, an initiative we call uh, We Create BC. Before I get started, uh, I am seriously blown away by the turnout here. I can't believe. So I'm going to talk about some numbers again. You guys have heard of them before, but I'm going to bring them up one more time. Four billion dollars. 85,000 jobs. I don't know about you guys. That sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty big. Now, I know your hands are probably sore, so I'm going to ask for a little bit of audience participation, okay? If you guys agree that this sector sounds pretty big, I want to hear a I. If you agree, say I. I. Not quite loud enough. <laughs> we have a lot of government people here. We have a lot of media here. This is our chance. If you agree, say aye. Aye! aye. All right. That's nice. more like it. <laughs> now, what's an important part of that 4,085,000 job sector? We are. We make up a lot of the infrastructure that the rest of that industry relies on. Some more numbers. $1.3 billion. That was our economic impact to BC in 2003. And since then, 
we brought in well over 10 billion. And most of that is foreign money, also known as new money, money that would have never landed here. So that seems pretty substantial too, don't you think? 25,000 jobs as well, 1.3, you know, let's average it out, 1 billion a year, maybe a little bit more, 25,000 jobs. Sounds pretty good. Again, if you agree, say aye. Aye! One more time, say aye. Aye! All right. I'm glad we agree on that. If you guys didn't, I would have had to toss this whole thing out. So, why is it that so many people in the general public and so many people, I, I won't say so many, a few people in government maybe just aren't seeing it. So the question is, how do we go about changing their mind? On that note, I'll pass over to Paul. So some of you uh, might have heard that we, through Impia, we're going to launch a campaign called We Create BC. We uh, notified it through a press release last year, and uh, things have changed. Obviously, uh, in the last couple of weeks, there's been this explosion, which has been absolutely fantastic to see through social media and traditional media, to bring the concerns of the industry forward through the Save BC film campaign, and people have taken notice. It's been incredible. However, we're launching the We Create BC campaign as another tool because it's all about what can we do more? What have uh, we done already, but what could we build on? And it's going to be another tool in the ongoing effort to build the industry in British Columbia. What is it, you may ask? We Create BC is designed as a positive message, social media and traditional media campaign to bring our message forward about who we are, what we do, and what we contribute to the economy. And it's not just the people in this room, and it's not just the people that couldn't make it tonight, but it's everybody that works in the creative sector. And that's why we're talking about those 85,000 jobs, because we need numbers. We need numbers to convince politicians that our, our jobs are worth fighting for. The uh, creative industries, as you've heard, are some of the fastest growing industries in the world. And BC, we feel, is positioned to be a leader, a world leader, because we've already built up the infrastructure, we have developed the talent, and we can do it here. But in order to get there, as everybody has said ahead of me, we need to do more. And this is one of the extra things that we can do. Back to Garen. We're going to switch back a couple times. So we all know how important our work is to us and the BC economy, but it's been long overdue for us to get that message out to the general public. We need to tell our story. The richer our story, the more voices that support it, the more we can demonstrate what is truly at stake here and the better understood our contribution and future potential will be. Notice I said future. Future potential. Growth. Let's key in on that. We Create BC will allow us to showcase the jobs, the people, and the investment. We Create BC will communicate our value, our true value, to BC's creative sector. We Create BC will provide a constant and consistent case for continued investment in both the creative sector and our industry, truly demonstrating what makes BC a world leader in the growing knowledge-based economy. 
So if you've already signed the Save BC Film petition, which I'm guessing pretty much everybody has, I sure have. And you've emailed your MLA. But wait, I'm not done. If you just emailed, that's not enough. You got to email them and you got to make it face to face because we got to humanize this industry. We have to get in there. No form letters, we're better than that. We don't need to do that. We can tell our story. We are storytellers. This is what we do. So what we need to do is we need to go in, we need to knock down doors because that's, that's what's going to make true change, okay? We need to talk to our MLAs face to face. And the more people that, the more people that approach MLAs, the more our voice is going to be heard. So... If you're still, if you've done that, if you've actually done your face-to-face -face with the MLA and you're sitting back asking, okay, so now what? Now what are we going to do? Well, here's your answer. <laughs> All right. So as of today, the Facebook page for We Create BC has been launched. And this is a place where you can tell your story. You can post a picture. You can say what the industry means to you. There's already a couple there out there. You might recognize them from the two people here because we were the guinea pigs. Uh, but we, again, we got to humanize this. We got we got to we got to tell a positive message, and we got to do this not just for us, but for other people. This is this is more about us. This is about the economy. This is about British Columbia. This is about a province we care about. There are some postcards. I understand they're gone already. We printed off a couple thousand. I guess we're going to print some more. But on the Fa Save BC or on the uh, We Create BC uh, webpage, there's an electronic postcard, so you can send that off as well. There's also an MLA finder. If you haven't seen one before on the internet, there's they're uh, through the government web pages as well. But uh, you can get it through the Facebook page to contact uh, the person in your riding. After this meeting. What's already been done uh, will continue, which is to continue the work to explore how to best join our voice in the motion picture industry with the other voices of the other creative industries, which have been mentioned before, digital entertainment, music, gaming, animation, publication, other industries that are in our sector, those 85,000 jobs. We haven't figured out how to get together and make our common voice heard. That's work that needs to be done because there's a lot of uh, different voices out there, but we're gonna do it and we're gonna do it because it's important. So we all need to understand one thing. We Create BC is a long-term strategy. Something that all of us in this room and everyone engaged in the industry is going to be working on for years to come. We be, we'll, we'll be keeping you up to date through, obviously, the Facebook page, Twitter, numerous other social and traditional media platforms as well as industry events and town hall meetings just like this, where we're going to ask you to share your concerns, share your issues, be heard. Because all of this that we're doing right now is to ensure that we, as an industry, speak with a common voice. And we want that common voice to be We Create BC. So in closing, I can only urge you to build on what has already been done and to continue to do what we can together to ensure that film, television, and other creative industries are recognized for what they are, an integral part of the BC economy. It's about jobs for the people in this room, for the people who couldn't make it, 
for the people in the industries that probably don't even know that we spend money in their shops. It's about the e economy of British Columbia and the vibrant economy that we bring here. And for all of our families that we're supporting and our friends that uh, rely on us to bring excitement to this province and adventure and crazy people sightings downtown when you're having coffee and everything else that comes with it. We want this to continue, we want to grow it, and we want to make this uh, just as good for us uh, as it was a couple of years ago as it will be for our kids and for the additional uh, people that are coming through the schools. We got to leave this for them as well. We got to build this into the industry that they want to be part of as well. And this, this, the opportunity to look forward to a career in this industry is something that we all value and it means so much to all of us. We all got to do our part. Thanks very much. Oh, yep. So I'll turn it back over to Jackson Davies. He's going to run through the question and answer period. Thank you very much. Well, it's so wonderful. What a, we've heard discussion tonight about this family, about this incredible family we have in, uh, in, in BC. And I, I'm thinking now, obviously, and even in Studio One, where it's just as crowded, that uh, what a passionate group of, uh, of, of, of people we are. And, and what, a, what an honor it is for me to be a part of this family. I want to say thank you very much for that. And the great thing about family is we're allowed once in a while to have some dialogue over the kitchen table. So here's an opportunity. We have, we have three mics set up here. And, and uh, if you have some questions for, for anyone on the group or just a, a, a general question, I'm sure we'll get an answer. And, and please, I, I know that people know me that sometimes I don't ask a question. I actually uh, start a speech. But uh, let's be conscious of everyone. And, and maybe, you know, make sure that there's, uh, if there's someone behind you, just uh, keep to one question. So uh, let's start. We'll start at uh, my yep. right. Right, uh, stage, uh, stage left. Uh, and if you like, uh, if you don't feel, if you don't mind, maybe just say your name and and your association with the industry. Just, just of maybe that's of interest. Unless, of course, you're in the witness protection plan and you don't want yes. to do that. <laughs> well, hi, I'm Gary Chalk. I, uh, I, ha ha ha. You know, I, I think I probably know most everybody in this room. I've been in the industry since uh, 1978, and. I remember the first film I remember shooting here in Vancouver was Our Man Flint, and I think Jackson was in it in 1964. <laughs> I'm not sure. Anyway, I, I don't want to get on a preamble. I, this is a family affair. My partner is a, is a producer, production manager. My sister over here is a craft service person with IA, and I am an actor. And I, we've all seen our wages uh, drop by a lot. But the question I want to ask you, is we all talk about unified vision. We all know what we want. We want our jobs back. We all want to, because we're all families and that. You, you, having a lot of experience on Facebook with information where people say, well, I've got a post that says this, and I've got a post that totally refutes that post. Well, I've got another post that totally refutes those too. Where is the common ground, folks? Where are the facts? Where are the figures? We can knock down doors to MLAs and go to our government offices, but we can't do it without the facts and figures to back us up. We want to see those facts and figures. Christy Clark comes out and says, $285 million were given away in tax credits. Well, what about the $300 million that we all pay in taxes? If our industry shuts down, where is that, folks? That's the, that's the question I want to know. We need a single voice, but we have to have it glued together with facts. Well, Gary, you know, we, we hope... Well, hello? You hear me? No, you... I can't talk? <laughs> uh, anyone want to uh, re respond to that? Oh, sorry, Peter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. You were closest. I'm sorry. Well, thanks, Gary, and I think we all agree in your sentiment that we've got to speak with one voice and we've got to get the facts. Um, we've got a lot of the facts with MPA. We've worked on a uh, an ep economic impact study. Um, we're waiting till the numbers are uh, agreed upon. Let's just call it that um, right now. And, and, and 
That's, that's what we're working on, but we weren't going to accept a report um, that understated the value of this industry. And so we're continuing to work with that group, and I think we'll have it. I mean, it's, it's our number one priority right now. Um, so we're going to have that, those numbers with you very shortly, and we'll definitely be posting them on the MPA website, and we'll try to also post them on the Recree BC website. Uh, I think Peter also mentioned earlier, we met with Minister Bennett right before this meeting, and um, as president of Entertainment Partners, I'm sensitive to the data that we sit on, and I'm sensitive to, I mean, it's data about all of you, but I will say this. I committed to him to help in any way to produce whatever confidential data we could to take it out of this billion-dollar industry and really humanize it at a job level. The number of people working today as compared to the number of people working last year. So we're committed to do that and I personally committed to Minister Bennett to see that through. So in addition to the economic impact studies, we will be working at that level. Yes? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Yeah, that's you. Hi, my name is Zach Seward. I'm an actor in the film and TV industry, and I want to. Gr when I grow up, I want to be a movie director. I really love what I do in this industry. I know that if the tax incentives don't improve, lots of people will lose their jobs. One of my New Year's resolutions is to make a difference. I am here to make a difference in the industry. I work as well as you, all of you do. Together we can create change, and our voices can be heard. Please write a letter to our premier and let her know we all matter. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Hi, I'm the mom. I'm getting a little teary. Um, my name is Marika Seward. I run a company called Emerton Records and Seward Entertainment Group. And we are our whole family. This is just one of my children, but my husband. And I have two other children. We are all actively involved in the industry. And um, I love what you guys are doing. Um, hats off to you. Um, I love the We Create Change. I love what the Save BC film has been doing. My question to you um, is, I have realized, just even from raising my kids, how much technology has overtaken our, our minds, our lives, and it's okay to a point, but nothing takes the place of human connection. And I am wondering if there are plans in place to actually passionately connect, um, not only with the people of BC to educate them on our industry, because we are some of the mis most misunderstood people as creatives, as production people and yet we create things that haven't even been created yet. We, we come up with them in our mind and we make it so. Um, I am wondering if there's plans put in place that we can actually, uh, like you've thrown out a lot of numbers and I, I've seen all the numbers, I've researched all the numbers, but is anyone um, really addressing the mental and physical and emotional and spiritual effects so that we actually empower future generations like this boy here to actually be excited about the future of the film industry and to continue to educate you know moms and dads and kids who are in it as well as those that aren't that just watch TV and they see the movie trucks and all those kind of things anyone uh, like to, uh, to to talk about that you head up to the mic so we get a chance to uh, to see who oh, we got a stereo going coming up here <laughs> go ahead thanks hi hi thank you for your question um, we we try and position our, our message uh, according to who we're speaking to. So the, the current government is particularly interested in the financial arguments uh, above all else about why should this industry be supported. Other policymakers have a lot more cultural or, as you say, philosophical or spiritual reasons why yeah. they would support what we do. and yeah. so. Although we do come with a, you know, we create BC, the importance of creative industries, yeah. we do tailor our message to whoever's listening. But I can just explain my experience in the, the halls of lobbying these days. Mm -hmm. Numbers and statistics are what people want to hear. Absolutely, but Premier Kirsty Clark, her, her, one of her top priorities is family. And have you, like, has anyone addressed the fact oh, yes. that we are oh, family? Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I was just wondering because I know she met with a bunch of mom bloggers, and I mean, as a mom, I wasn't there, but are they actually representing the moms and dads of the film industry? I think we have work to do. We need help. Please, pitch in. Totally, I'm in, uh, I'm in. Because, yeah, absolutely. That, uh, it's a great idea. Thank we you. Could, we thank could you. really use uh, any of ideas like that because we're only a few people. So awesome. Thank awesome. you. Just just to add, sorry, maybe it, yes. I might be hearing your comment wrong, Yeah. but we create BC. Part of it is to really tell the story of everybody that's involved, and, okay. and that's to the general public yeah. as well as the government because... You said something that kind of resonated with me, which is we are very misunderstood. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people see people that are involved, they, they hear film industry and they automatically think Hollywood, yeah. right? <laughs> and it is important to have the government on our side, but it's also very important to have the general public on our well, they're side. They're the voting public, right? Exactly. So, so one of the biggest things is the We Create BC. Again, I want to keep going back to it. It's Maybe it's the wrong word right now, but it's humanizing our industry. It's getting it down to the layers to say, listen, we are not a bunch of Hollywood guys that fly up on their Learjets, come in, take brief briefcases of cash, and take it back down to L.A. Yeah. We're people like you. It's people like your son that we're actually supporting. And that's what we want to key in on, on Create on uh, create BC. Awesome. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Well done. Thank you. Yes. Uh, hello, I'm Ellie Harvey, and I'm an actor. And the, uh, hello, everyone. And uh, clearly, I have to follow the kid. It's a little pressure. Um, uh, <laughs> damn those kids. Um, they always get the good rules. Okay, um, but what, what I was going to say was I was just working on something, and Kathy Makeup, where are you, Kathy? She was telling me about uh, working on a, a show out in Cloverdale, and uh, they did a wedding scene, and they spent $20,000 at a florist's shop. A and this florist was just going on about, oh, my God, they made my year. Like, I didn't know how I was going to do without this year. It's Those are the stories that we need to to have access to. Now, I'm, uh, now, in Saskatchewan, when they were losing their industry, they made cards that said, I support Saskatchewan film or something. And they would hand them out, like when they were buying coffees for the set, and hand it to the coffee shop, so the coffee shop knew, oh, this is connected to the film industry. I is there anything, uh, any thought of having something like that with We Create, so that when they get the, go buy stuff at Winners for the wardrobe, they go, this is actually for a film we're shooting. Why don't you go to this website and, you know, put well, down how much money we spend well, here, sure. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah, take that, kid. Uh, Ellie, if there wasn't an idea for doing that, there is one now. Okay? I would think that would be uh, the answer. Yes, yeah, so we're going to go back over to this side and we'll work our way over here. Yes. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name's Glenn Campbell. I'm in the costume department. Thank you. Regarding the one point something billion dollars spent by the BC spent in BC by the film industry, it not only gets respent, it gets regifted. Each year, millions of dollars of goods and services go unrecorded as to what has been done for the greater good of our communities when we have a thriving film industry. Film workers and dollars quiet and dollars quietly support organizations who take care of the poor, they support educational institutions, and they support medical facilities with donations of leftover stock from productions. They support cultural groups by sharing their unique skill set. There's many more instances, and you can all name 10, I'm sure. Unfortunately, this charitable activity has never been recorded. Thus has not been taken into account as to the benefits a thriving film industry provides in our province. Many other industries and organizations record their activities as regular actions of their business. Obviously, we should be doing something about this too. So tonight, as an informal record, I'm going to ask for a show of hands regarding the giving spirit of this community and this industry. I'm going to ask twice for two separate show of hands. First, who here representing the film industry has never given to the outside world, outside of the film organization or community, has never donated time, money, or goods and services to the economy of BC? As if they're going to put their hand much. up. <laughs> 
Okay, let's turn it around. Secondly, who here, representing the film industry, has donated to the well-being of communities across BC by generously giving of time, money, energy, goods, and services? Who has donated food, donated clothing, furniture, construction materials, skills, and dollars? I personally want to thank you. I think you're tremendous. May I add, as are the foreign dollars which support the charities as well. So my recommendation to your group is let's record that number as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is David Markowitz. I'm a first AD and I'm unemployed. So I just want to say, uh, I have one question for Ampia, and I just wanted to say thank you for everyone coming out here. Um, I thank Sandra Montgomery and Matt Tingey, because without them, I wouldn't have been involved. And I thank Save BC Film. It means a lot to me, and it means a lot to this industry. So. My question to you, and I don't know if it's something you can answer now, but I think it's something for you to consider, is that there is a group of people, many that may be here tonight, many that are not here tonight, that are coming in tomorrow and donating their services to create six or eight PSAs tomorrow. These PSAs, right now as it stands, we were offered a possibility of putting them on a network, but we cannot, because we are not a nonprofit organization, say BC Film. But you are. And if we got the airtime and you approved these and they were up to that status of what you feel is the right message, maybe this is something, maybe not this six or this eight PSAs, but PSAs in the future can be made to inform the world of British Columbia that we are a bunch of faces and we are starving and we have children and we all have to make a goddamn living. So that's my question. Will you possibly consider in the future looking at PSAs as an avenue as a nonprofit to put them on the air, on network, to counter whatever government's in effect saying there is no 90% unemployment, there is no problem with the BC film industry? <laughs> that, th this, is, this is the easiest question in the 14 interviews I've done this week. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. And yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Jackson. I'm a independent indigenous producer in British Columbia. My name is Elvira Lount. I've been in the business since the 70s. Um, I'm a dying breed. <laughs> in Ontario, 70% of the, the production spend in Ontario is um, from local producers, Canadian production. How much is that in BC? We, uh, you have some figures, Brian? <laughs> okay. The last year that we have figures for, uh, of the whole production pie, 20% is local domestic production, 80% is service production. Right, so Ontario is way ahead of us, and one of the reasons is, first, the OMDC, they have a 400,000 uh, equity fund that they'll put into feature films, 15% of your budget up to 400,000. That's one thing. They have a very organized group of 40 producers who belong to PRO, the Producers Roundtable of Ontario, who are instrumental in leading the fight to get the tax credits um, and the OMDC with the Ontario government. Um, and they get the bulk of telefilm funding and broadcast funding that is spent in Canada. The Western provinces in 2010 and 11, and I don't know the statistics for last year, but Brian might, Telefilm Canada's feature film fund of $100 million only spent 6.5% in the entire West. B 
BC alone has 13% of Canada's population. Where's our 13% of the $100 million? Like Peter, you've just asked me a very easy question. We absolutely agree with you that BC and the West in general should have our fair share of telefilm and of CMF and of other uh, money that's in the system. One factor in the, on the feature film side that you're talking about is that our local uh, agency for supporting Indigenous producers, which is BC Film, not to be confused with the Save BC Film, but there's an organization called BC Film. They do not have any equity funding at all, and their funding has been cut in half over the last couple of years compared to what it was before. It started at $5 million, it's now at $1 million. So, so we need to get that back and we need it to be higher. That should be a key element of the platform that we're discussing, to increase tax credits, PST exemption, and Equity for feature films made by BC producers. Absolutely. And <laughs> I would suggest that everyone here put on their email list Michael Roy or Michelle Roy, the telefilm uh, chairman. Um, I, I was at the annual general meeting of telefilm in Toronto in uh, November and I brought this inequity up, and his answer to me was basically, I don't care. We support the best films. We don't care. In other words, the West does not produce the best, was his opinion. He was very arrogant. Um, he, you know, he's from Quebec. They get the, the major portion of all the telefilm money. So put him on your email list <laughs> and let him know what you think. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, yes, we'll, uh, we'll go back over to this side. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Zaf Peru. I'm an actor. And uh, first, I just want to say that it's really nice to be in the loop. You know, we're all questioning where the momentum has been going and it's so good to know where where you guys are projecting to go and where the momentum is going to be headed so that's really awesome um, what I and I do agree with you that we have to consolidate our voices and so what I would ask is while we're waiting for the finalized numbers that we're talking about in the meantime if we have I mean there's some really impressive statistics that were thrown out today things that I didn't know about sort of where uh, you know the slices of the pie versus forestry versus tourism versus mining and if we have a consolidated uh, and I think that's one of the things that was brought up before but until we have the new numbers, if we have something that's put on the We Create page or on the Save BC Film page, then we can share that instead of us, because it, it doesn't mean anything for us individually to post it on our wall from each of us individually opposed to sharing something that's coming from that global community and which consolidates us as a voice and say, look at this, this is what we're a part of, versus us trying to reach our friends who kind of don't give a shit. <laughs> which brings me to my next point is... You know, we're all in this industry and we will fight for this industry, but I think the bigger picture is to make people who aren't in this industry aware of it. And that's what the PSAs are doing. And I think that, you know, we're all storytellers and we all have these things right at our fingertips. So we need to shoot things and we need to do everything that are in our, like, humor and vis effects and pull at their heartstrings and every tool that we have at our facility to, m to make things happen, to bring awareness to people who aren't in this industry. Shit, I'll work for scale. <laughs> I'm vice president of the union. We can get lower than that. We can work on that, okay? No, but I think, you know, having those two things is, I think, really key. Thank you, Zach. Remember to find gravity? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to, to take this opportunity to mention that uh, this report that was released in the spring that talks about the numbers of the creative economy, where we fit in BC's perspective and the economy that will be posted online so that people can download copies and quote chapter and verse from what we have that's great uh, yes yes hi my name is Mackenzie Gray I'm an actor uh, thank you 
I'm also a producer. I've produced, uh, co-produced a film that uh, went around the world. It was filmed entirely in BC. I employed over 150 actors. We've been paying people out. It's been returning money on the investment. Um, I'm also a director. And so I work in many different facets of this industry. And I, I, I was just going to say that um, when you're sending a message or a group message or a collective message, um, there's facts and figures are in, the, in the, the, the purview of the people who can provide them. And one of the things I've always loved, one of my great heroes was John Lennon. And John Lennon just said, give peace a chance. So instead of saying, don't fight, don't do this, don't do that, he gave a positive possibility. And I think one of the messages that we have to get across, not just to the government, but to people, as, as Zach pointed out, to the public awareness is that we are an industry, not a special interest group. All right? And it's, it's, it's funny, Larry Sugar once described the film industry, said it's the only industry that has such an ego about itself that it describes itself as the industry, as if it didn't need a name. <laughs> but we are an industry, and we are not, you know, the arts is constantly, I mean, I grew up in the theater, and the theater has always been looked at as a frivolous kind of, you know, attachment to society here in Canada, and it's not. It's fundamental to the understanding of our culture and our being. And, you know, <clears throat> and you can throw all the figures you want at politicians, and it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. It can to the bean counters, and it can to the people, but the financial advisory committee to the government has already told them to increase the, 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 the spending. And they've told them to increase the spending on the arts in general. So they're not listening for a fundamental reason. And we don't know what that reason is, but the thing is, we have to show them we are an industry, and not only do we produce all this money, but we're essential to the structure of a society if we give a value to the society that we have. Yeah, it's as simple as that. And uh, that's the message. But we won't show them my, uh, when I did the Freddy Got Finger movie, okay? Cause that, please no, okay. please okay. no. Okay. Yes. Over, over here. Hi. Uh, my name is Alec Duhamel, and I'm a film student. Hi, hi everybody. Um, I'm just up, up at Capilano, just up the road. And um, I was... My family is in the film industry and in the video game industry, and when I talked to them about this whole situation, uh, one of the things that they brought up was you might have to go where the work is, and being Toronto and Montreal. And I really like it here. <laughs> um, I'm a Canucks fan, and I, I, I can't cheer for Toronto. They're awful. And uh, so I was just wondering, is there enough room for everyone? Like, the students coming into uh, the film industry, is there enough room for everyone to kind of work with this, like, in a way that, <laughs> we're young, but we're nice. Well, you know, actually, we were talking earlier about that, and, and you know, these these can be the worst of times, and these can be the best of times. And as, and I'm I'm sensing now that the major broadcasters in Canada are realizing that may have made a mistake by just buying American programming because they own nothing, right? So all of a sudden, there has been a bit of a change with that benefit package, where anyways, that a lot of them, certainly in Ontario, the number of Canadian series has exploded because they realize they have to have something on the air that they own. So let's right. let's just hope that we can we can turn the ship around and, and, and get more production out here and get a chance for, for you, you to work on not only service industry, but your own projects as well. Okay. Thank, thank you. Oh, yeah. Hi. I, I would just want to add that the, this industry is transforming. Five years ago, were there web series that get, were getting made, YouTube stars being created. Uh, your fellow students and your generation is desperately needed to uh, reinvigorate and add innovation to what we do. It's not that you are, you know, displacing people. You're creating new opportunities, new jobs. We're absolutely needing people like yourself. And don't go anywhere. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank, th you. Th thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. And over here, my name is Gavin Craig. I'm with IATSC Local 891. Okay. 
Uh, Jackson, I've got a couple of years on you. I cut all the original negative on the little, littlest hobo that was shot up in West Vancouver. <laughs> oh, yeah, now the littlest hobo's going to get an applause. There you go. I wanted to talk about fundamentals, and I'm just going to point something out to you. You may recall that um, there was a premier in Ontario called Harris. And in the late 90s and early 2000s, he decided that he was going to double the tax incentives to the motion picture industry, which threw a spanner in the works as far as British Columbia workers were concerned in this industry. So collectively, the BC Council of Film Unions, which comprised of IATSC Local 891, 669, the Teamsters, along with UBCP, and along with the DGC, I see Crawford Hawkins out here, and we were just dabbling about that a moment ago. We got in touch with Victoria, and we said, we've got a problem. Ontario's putting the stiff on us. So what, what are we going to do about it? So Glenn Clark's office said, come on over and talk to us. He was premier at the time. He was also, I think he was finance minister. It may have been Joy McPhail at that particular time. But Glenn had been finance minister. So we were in a pickle. Ontario had stiffed us. We went over and we sat in the office with Glenn Clark and a handful of BC producers as well. You may remember James Shavik. He was there as well. And all the union members, and we sat down with Glenn Clark, and he said, well, what's the problem? And we told him what Harris had done. He said, well, there's a little problem. He says, the budget is legislated and we cannot change the budget this fiscal year. He says, but I'll tell you what we can do. What we can do is we can take the refund from the GST from the federal government and kick that back into your tax incentives. And that's what he did. There was no figures going from there to here and methodology and challenges on the methodology of what figure you come up to, it was a philosophical decision that this one individual, the premier of the province, could make. And you haven't done it yet. You haven't done that yet. You haven't knocked down her door and said, we want to see you. We want you to make a decision. Are you going to support this particular industry or are you not? And if you're not, tell the public of British Columbia and tell all these people in here. Thank you. Could you, could, you could you imagine the pressure being the first person that comes up, says his name, and no one applauds it? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we'll give it a try. Okay. Um, my name is Bruce Houston, and I'm a sculptor. I work in makeup and creature effects. <laughs> I, uh, I've also been fortunate enough to spend the last three years working as an instructor at the Vancouver Film School. And as... As I've been sitting here listening to what everyone's saying and thinking about all of the economic uh, trickle-down effect that our industry creates, um, all, all of the supplies, all of the stuff that our industry purchases from local businesses, local industry, wholesalers, retailers, all of that stuff, I mean, what numbers do we have? What numbers can we get? to accurately reflect what the economic impact is that our business creates on the local suppliers and what kind of political clout can that generate if we get a number attached to it and can we get support, can we reach out to the big box suppliers, the Home Depots, the whoever's, to, to say, are you guys on board? Are you on our side? Absolutely. No, I we're, we're going to do that, right? We're, we are going to do that. Someone mentioned Starbucks. You're right. We've probably paid for six or seven stores over the years. Yeah. Thank you. Yes? Jack, um, my name is Joe Foley. I work for Christie Lights, and I've been directly and indirectly involved in this industry for the past 13, 14 years. Uh, thank you. Uh, we talked a lot tonight about public perception, and I'm kind of one of those guys gets on Facebook and likes to spout off and some of you will recognize my spouts and my rants and my spam or whatever you want to call it. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I run up against in the public perception is the clarification of the word subsidy over the word credit. 
And I believe that a lot of the media is spinning it more and more and over and over again to the word subsidy. Now, we all know that without $1.2 billion worth of money coming in, that almost a half a billion dollars of personal BC income tax money is not paid to this. I ran numbers, best of my abilities. That's one stat that I ran to myself with a calculator. It's a half a billion dollars in personal income tax alone from 25,000 people. That doesn't even include me or my wife or anyone else who works outside of this industry. The message that nobody's getting in the public and where they're getting lost is they're getting lost on the word subsidy. They believe that our government is putting money into it. There is no money in without us. So there's no money to get out. And somehow that message, I feel, needs to be delivered. And it's one of the most important public perception um, problems that we're having. Absolutely. So that's all I had to say. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Hi. My name's Al Yu. I'm a grip for a few years. Uh, yeah. The... The question I have for you, uh, you know, Christy Clark has the family situation going on in jobs in BC. Uh, here we're talking about a combined effort to get some help to keep this business growing and most of all surviving. Uh, correct me if I'm mistaken, but right now do the tax incentives not, do they only go to long format? You know, like uh, if you are in the commercial industry, you cannot qualify for those tax incentives. If you're gaming, I don't, I'm assuming you don't qualify for those tax incentives. So are we going to do the combination thing and gaming, film, commercial, TV? Are we going as one big family or are we going to stay separate like we are at the moment? Uh Peter, up on. Okay. Uh, that, that's a good question, and, uh, and we've addressed that question in a few different conversations with uh, uh, industry association members and other industries. Um, you know, we're working in, on enlarging our industry to cover more of the sectors, and you heard Brian talk a little bit to that. And one of the things I think that we've decided is um, it makes more sense to look at what are the needs of those different organizations because they're quite separate. Um, you know, what the gaming people need might be quite different from the film and television people, um, might be different from uh, the book publishing people, et cetera. Um, it's, I think it's in our best interest to look at how do we build each of those sectors and use the expertise in those sectors to make those decisions in terms of policy for government. I don't think there's any... Um, I can't think of any uh, jurisdiction where they kind of lump it all together and just offer one incentive. And I think there's real danger in doing that um, because you want to be flexible to be able to um, build certain industry sectors where we've got, you know, real opportunity. And certainly in this sector, you know, we've got better opportunity than any other jurisdiction that I can think of. So um, we like to keep it where the expertise is involved in those different sectors advising what is the best way to incentivize those particular sectors if necessary. Well, at the moment, Ontario has, they're included with their commercial production and their film and television production. It's all one big group. So, you know, film's film, whether it's a commercial or whatever. You know, they're, we're suffering in the, long, in the long format and the commercial world is dying. So if we're going to do this as one group, we have to do it as one group or we're just going to stay separate like we are now? Well, I think, you know, I, I think the, commercial, the commercial industry is one that we could include in this sector. Um, I'm thinking more in terms of the games and some other uh, areas in terms of the creative economy that we might want to look. But certainly the commercials is, is basically the same work as we do. One of the problems we've had with the commercial industry is just measuring it properly. And, and that's going to be, I think, part of our, one of our goals going forward. Thank you. And, and you have, uh, you're going to clarify that? Yeah. yeah, no, I just actually, I was wanting to speak to the people at the back of the hall. Can you guys hear me back there? Because we are not going to have Christy Clark listen to us if we cannot listen to each other. So if you want to talk, go outside and let everybody else here voice their opinions because it's disrespectful and rude. Thank you.
Uh, yes. Oh, Hello, thanks. Hi, my name is Jazz Graywall, and I've been in the BC film industry for 10 years. Um, I'm not interested in the American dream. I'm interested in the Canadian dream because I was born and raised here. So, you know, that's what I wrote on the postcard to Christy Clark. Um, I want my question um, is to do with tourism. I just wanted to ask you, what are we doing to let the BC government know about their hypocrisy? Hypocrisy? Ah, <laughs> hypocrisy. Thank you. We know <laughs> what you're about. You know what I mean. Um, towards BC tourism, when you see those beautiful BC campaigns and. They they are starring um, the creatives, Ryan Reynolds and Nelly Furtado and Sarah McLaughlin. Well, how can you, you know, expect to use the creatives to expand tourism and promote tourism when you're not willing to support us? That's, that's one generation. We're the next generation. So when they move on, you know, who's going to be there to step up? Well, we hope it's you. Oh, I hope so too. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, hey, my name is uh, Chris Thorpe. Uh, I'm a film student, and when I want to impress my friends, I'm a freelance producer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, going back to the, 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 the topic of students and youth, uh, youths, uh, the, 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 the hundreds of thousands of students across who are in universities, high school, or even the ones who just come graduated straight out of high school, uh, they, that voting block is largely ignored by politicians and is usually just uh, discarded. However, that sector, or sorry, that uh, voting block is usually strongly supportive of arts, of the creative sector, and of things like film. Uh, what are your strategies or what are your ideas on uh, really networking and uh, really getting at these hundreds of thousands of 16-year-olds, uh, 18-year-olds, 20-year-olds, and bringing them out to support this cause? Uh, who wants to, uh, a great cut, great idea. Anyone yeah, want to chat about that? Honestly, I don't think we have a very good strategy for reaching those people, and we need your help. Perfect. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, over to Yes, yes, you. Thank you. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, you owe me 10 bucks. Hey, it's uh, Bruce Murray from the uh, fabulous grip department here. <laughs> So this grip walks into a bar. No, uh, you've heard that one? Hey, uh, I'm just thinking, maybe this crowd would fit on the, uh, well, it won't fit under Christy Cart's uh, front lawn, but I'm thinking maybe the, it would fit on the art gallery, the steps of the art gallery overflowing into the streets. I think we need a more public presence, okay? Absolutely. As, uh, I don't know if anyone's heard of the Idle No More campaign, but uh, they seem to be getting a little press these days. I think we should take a page out of their book and apply it right here before the election. Raise our profile physically, publicly. We need to be heard and seen. You know, I, I applaud the online campaign. Thank you to the organizers. But I think physically, nothing beats knocking on the door. Hi, I'm here. I want a job, I want you to keep my job here, and P.S., I vote, yeah. right? So when's the, when's the rally at the art gallery? What, when? So, so Bruce, I do not disagree with you. For the past 10 days, I've been in the press, I've been talking about each and every one of us, and, but you have to understand, the public, we are now in the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. We've taken all of these people and all of these Facebook messages and all of these Twitter things, and we've hit media coast to coast. I was on CBC National with John Gameshi. Thank you, John Gameshi, this morning, mm -hmm. coast to coast. Our message is getting out there. Our problem with the court of public opinion, which is what everybody's been talking here tonight mm -hmm. is, is if we go and stomp on the art gallery and run all of our trucks around and around and around and around and around, which has been suggested, Actually, first it was suggested to put him on a ferry and take him to the parliament, and then that was going to cost too much because we're not working. But yeah. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. But in the court of public opinion, we are whiny, sniveling, entitled brats. That is what the public of British Columbia thinks about our industry. And the gentleman who said subsidy, what's the difference, or uh, Joe, who's difference between subsidy and tax rebate. If you look at definitions, 
there are 17 different definitions for each one of them. One means a handout, one doesn't mean a handout. One means a rebate, the other one doesn't. And it's so convoluted and nobody can agree on what the definitions are. So I'm all for that. I'm all for Go Stomp on the Art Gallery. We film there, we support it, we spend money there in the city of Vancouver. Why the hell not? Mm -hmm. Because the press is going to spin it and it's going to be negative and negative and negative and our message is going to get, it's going to be a 24-hour news cycle and we're back to square one. So I'm happy to do it after we spend some time spinning our message the way we need to spin it mm -hmm. to tell everybody that we are families, we are mortgages and, 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 and everything and, and kids' ballet classes and no different than anybody else. As soon as we do that and they still don't listen, then we go stomp on the art gallery and we drive our trucks around and around and around and around and around until they listen. We've got a lot of, a lot of people waiting. Thank you very much. Yes. Tom Kaczmarski, Grips. <laughs> One of the things I love best about my job is teaching, bringing kids onto set over the years, teaching. And this year I spent a lot of time running around the festival circuit with a lot of these, well, they're not kids, they're in their 20s. We had a lot of fun. A lot of cable got patched, a lot of blacks, you know, all kinds of stuff. You talk about donations. I learned a lot about my son's friends and their whys. And they're walking away from so many of the things that we thought were important, our big houses and our cars. What strikes me is what they consider a viable commodity for them is their experiences. They'll go see something they'll go do something. This is the business of the future. Not building a car, not logging, not oil. This is the business of the future. And I'm not just talking about film, I'm talking about performing arts, live performances, I'm talking about music. God, they're just fighting for a venue. Look at what's happening at the Waldorf. Those people are in the same boat we're in. We're all in this together. Two articles I found. One came out of Ontario. A new report commissioned by the Ontario Arts Council shows the significant impact of the arts and culture on Ontario tourism. So let's talk about brass tacks. They link money spent, time stayed, and general satisfaction in their tourist industry to media and arts, people attending performances, people going to art galleries, people watching movies, that's one. So there is a spillover that we don't even think about. Two, European Commission, Brussels, 26th of uh, the ninth month of 2012, Promoting cultural and creative sectors for growth and jobs in the EU. First thing that I underline, between 2008 and 2011, employment in the cultural and creative sectors provided more pro proved more resilient than the EU economy as a whole, and growth rates vary, uh, with growth rates varying, however, between sectors. This tendency is all the more interesting because, hi kids, I'm gonna talk about you again. This is all the more interesting because some sectors have a higher percentage of youth employment than the rest of the economy. Being at the crossroads between arts, business, and technology, cultural and creative sectors are in a strategic position to trigger spillovers in other industries. They fuel content for ICT applications, creating a demand for sophisticated consumer electronics and telecommunication devices. Culture and creativity have also direct impacts on sectors such as tourism, are integrated in all stages of the value chain of other sections such as fashion, high-end industries, where their importance is a, is a key underlying, is as key underlying assets and increasing. Culture as a whole makes all the difference in the world. It's the synergy that Toronto and Montreal are moving forward with. The piece of that puzzle that is alive and healthy right now is this industry and the gaming industry. And I think we need to convince our government that it has to capitalize on that success and broaden it. 
and turn this place into a cultural haven. And it can be that. We don't have the history Toronto does, but we have a beautiful home. That's the challenge, Thank you. isn't it? Thank you. Yes. yes. Hi. Uh, my name is Forbes Angus. I'm a UBCP member and an actor. And um, thanks. Um, I just want to make a couple of quick points. Um, I, I, I looked at, the, at an OMDC uh, press release just a few days ago, and that's when it really got through my head. And I'm in, I'm in the industry here, and I finally realized just how far ahead of us they were. I should have known this before. And they were like, they were, there was a two or three, was, this was from February last year, and it described how well the Ontario industry had done in 2011. It was a press release in February 2012. And there were four or five bulleted points near the end of that press release. And one of those points was, for every million dollars spent in the Ontario film industry, 23 jobs are generated. Now, we all know this stuff is true. This is the, multi the multiplier effect that we've all been talking about here. That this is the message that we need to get out. But that just jumped out at me, that little fact. And if we can find three or four facts like that, 23 jobs for every million bucks invested. That is extraordinary. There's no other sector of the economy. I'm a, I studied economics once years ago, and I, I, um, uh, I can't think of another, when, 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 you, when you invest, uh, think of all the money that's been spent in this province in the forest industry to prop up mills during this long drought in the forest industry that we've had. All of this money that's been spent to subsidize mills, and it's, it, it was subsidies, not credits. Um, is the multiplier effect anything like the film industry generates? No. And we need to take three or four facts like that that can fit on a bumper sticker. And, and, and people will get it when, we, when they see that. The other point is yep. that I'd like to make very quickly is that we are members of unions, most of us here, pretty much all of us, I think. And I suspect that many of the unions in Ontario to which we belong locally, but those same unions in Ontario are out there lobbying for the credits that, that have come so successfully there. And we're working across purposes, I think. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Henry Ma, uh, actor, and I also teach actors, so I'm doing my thing to bring people up as well through this industry. Uh, while I was standing over there just listening to some of the, the, the things going on, I had an idea. Buttons. Uh, we create BC, and, and even whatever sector that we're in, actor, grip, filmmaker, producer, etc. And the other thing is this, is that, is that all of, thank you for doing this, standing for us as, as a, 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 what looks like a, an executive team, but for then for all the rest of you, we're all, we're all, you all know an actor, you all know a filmmaker, you all know someone who's got a great camera, make your own thing, make your own little PSA. You generate an emotional response out in the public with your face, not just, absolutely get behind them, but also get behind yourselves. Because one other thing that, that I'm, I've become an emotional barometer here, it feels like, but one of the things is, is that we as an industry cannot just be victims of the circumstances of how the government has been treating us, how Ontario has been treating us, or, you know, federally, provincially, whatever. Just stand up, own that you're, how proud you are. I, I'm very proud to be in this industry and just keep, keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. And yes. Hi, my name's Brett Stone. I'm an um, electrician with uh, IBW uh, 213. And I, I wanted to say that I came to support this industry because it uh, influences the economy so strongly. I was wondering if there's uh, any um, attempts going to be made to uh, reach out to other unions or other um, employ employment uh, organizations to try to strengthen the economy um, in the future. Because as you were saying, the film industry is uh, what brings in so much new money. And your, uh, many, employer, many of your employees uh, sort of cycle in and out from other trade organizations. So I was wondering if there's going to be any efforts to talk to trade unions for uh, their support. You want to take that? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Hi, thanks for your comment. And that's, that's absolutely something I don't think that we've ever discussed, but uh, give me a call. <laughs> and, and we could start something up. I mean, I think that's a great idea. I mean, we, we, and I, I think just in general, you know, we've, 
and mentioned a lot of comments of you know what we can do and stuff like that and and to be clear I mean we're all in this together so you know there's a couple people here out on the stage and I know we had comments from students how can we get involved how we get the students involved how can we get our neighbors involved we all got to do it and that that's that's all of it so if there's great ideas like that you know like absolutely call any of us uh, you probably uh, Paul K at iatsi.com send me an email right. um, but uh, you know, without everybody's participation, um, you know, we're, we're not as strong as, as when people pitch together. And that's obviously what we've seen with Save BC Film. That's what we would need to see for the future. We all, we all got to put in something. Thanks. Great, thank you. Uh, yes. My name is Brian Beard, and I'm a cameraman. And in IATSE 669, I'm a uh, electronic cinematographer, or DP. Um, I am actually a direct result of the trickle-down of the industry here in British Columbia. Um, some of you may know my father, his name is Hugh Beard. He's been a bit of a, a worker, I would say, and he's still working. He's not quit yet. <laughs> uh, I started in a little place on the back lot of a, a small restaurant in Gibson's where I used to do things like wash that fellow's car. Hell of a job, so, too, let me tell you. Hell of a job. <laughs> Thank you. I directly benefited from BC Film. And I am now in this industry, and I think everybody here should be proud of the work that we do here. Everybody is turned out tonight. I think it's a big round of applause. I speak for people that I know that couldn't make it tonight, um, people that are going to be watching, listening, reading, Whatever it is, there is so much communication now in the world. Um, and I challenge everybody, because everybody's a cameraman these days. <laughs> everybody has a camera. And I think if we do get the voice out there, and it's unity, and we say we create BC, I will go on and I will say I am Brian Beard, and I create BC. And together, we create BC. And I have one quick question I just want to ask. I will eventually get to the art gallery and s storm the legislature, wherever you want to go. But when is the next meeting? Because I think we could double this crowd at another venue, in another event, in a very reasonable manner. When, when, when can we get together and talk about this more and create more awareness for everybody else out there? Uh, we didn't actually have an, an easy way to count. <laughs> so we had 2,000 bumper stickers, they're gone. We had 2,000 of the, the postcards, they were gone. And we were trying to stop security from you know, pushing people over into stage. And we're probably, well, I would guess 3,500, almost 4,000 people today. I would say safely, at our peak, we had 4,000 people. <laughs> trying to get another meeting together like this, and it, it's a big deal. And we've got to start grassroots again and I'm working our MLAs and we're asking for everybody's support to support what we're starting here now and then you know it, that election I keep going to that election and you know if Bruce wants to storm the Bastille I'm right there behind him but it's <laughs> got to be at the right time and we got to band together keep one message keep one force and keep pushing that's what we got to do so keep watch the Facebook page keep talking to people and see what you know we can get out of this as soon as we possibly can Thank you. Thank you. And you know, the great thing about the, uh, the Facebook pages when, when they're already out is that it is a two-way street. So we're getting wonderful suggestions from you know everyone in the lineup, which is wonderful. But you know, e even if unfortunately we're going to have to wrap it up in you know 10 or 15 minutes. But if you have ideas, you can get at at the organization through Facebook, and that's the wonderful thing. It is a two-way street. Okay. Uh, so uh, so remember, we we don't have much time. If we can kind of pick things up, and yes. Hi, uh, my name is Ashley Hand. I'm a UCP member. Uh, <laughs> you clapped, thank you. Um, I also work in casting and I also work uh, as a background performer and a ba at a background agency, Local Color Represent. I was also in stage one. We had at least four or 500 people in there. So um, I just had an idea. It doesn't cost any money. Everyone can do it every day. And I just feel like it might get a little bit more of a personal experience out to the world. And that's every time you buy something, just look at the person and say, I work in BC Film. 
they will look at you like you're crazy. <laughs> Why do I care? But if you look at the people that you're spending your money, the person at Rexall and the person at Starbucks and the person at Save On Foods and the person at your hairdresser and if you, if everybody here just looked every time they use their debit card and said, I work in BC Film, I just feel like people would understand we spend money here, we buy coffee here, we live here, we are a huge part of the community and if every single person did it, then I feel like we would get a lot more of that grassroots turnaround in terms of the representation that you're talking about. So. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's a good idea. Okay, yes. Um, my name is Goldie Hoffman, and I'm an actress and comedian just starting out in my career. And I actually whew, that's, that's just, I left Montreal to come here. And I, I faced that decision when I decided to study acting and I looked at Toronto and Vancouver. I'm also a dual citizen and I looked at the states and something about BC attracted me. I never visited. I, I looked up photos. I didn't have money to go scope it out first and then come. So I just got my flight and left and, and I studied for a year and then I decided to stay here. And I've struggled with that question of should I be here, uh, should I go elsewhere? And it's not that I won't take projects elsewhere, but I always, something about Vancouver and BC drew me to this province and I want this to remain a base. And I want to thank all of you and everyone who came here because I actually feel a lot more optimistic because I feel like we have a game plan now. The worst thing about anything in life is, is when you're facing something and you feel powerless and you feel like, oh, well, this is just happening and it has been for two, three years. Yeah, it kind of sucks, but now at least we're not going to go down without a fight. It feels like we, we have something to fight for. We have a message. I received a lot more power just in receiving all of the stats. And as somebody else mentioned, I would definitely like to take a more direct um, role in helping bring the youth into this because he asked where, what, where is the strategy for youth and why doesn't the government care? Because quite frankly, a lot of youth, and it's true, where we feel disrespected, we don't vote, but we do have a voice. And I think we can change that and we're very vocal in this community. Right. So, Good. That's what, so thank you. Thank you for choosing us. That's right. Yes. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rob Hamilton, and I am a gaffer and film student at Kaplan University. Thank you. And I came here tonight with a group of my fellow classmates to find out what's going on. Because, to be perfectly honest, we're scared. We don't know the environment we're going into, and we want to know, will there be jobs for us when we finish our school? Will we have to go to Toronto, to America, to the UK, to wherever else, just to find work to do what we love? And what can we do to help? What can we at Capilano and other schools around uh, BC do to help with this, to help, to help build We Create BC, and to help join the ranks of these amazing people who showed up tonight to rally to save BC film? Okay. Anyone want to answer that? Yes. Well, do what you love to do with this as a cause. You know, uh, people have been suggesting this anyway. Make a your own PSA, make your film, make uh, a web series, be successful in a way that uh, doesn't use the usual suspects and, and, you know, find a way. Just, I wish I had more specifics, but just don't give up. This is a pendulum type industry. So right now, Advantage Ontario, a year or two from now, one never knows. There's an election there in 2015 and they are in a dire financial strait. So know that nothing will remain the same and don't give up hope. Thank you. Also, just one more thing to add. I think it's, uh, I think it's important that government has a clear view of the future investment as well. They obviously do because they've been investing in schools like Kaplan University and that amazing film program they have there. So it would be really good to key in and say, okay, thank you very much for investing in this school. I've graduated, now what? 
And I think it's important that you uh, have your fellow students maybe get together and uh, you know go go talk to the to your MLAs in your different areas, but talk to government. Uh, whether you can vote or not, it doesn't really matter. What it is is you're you're a British Columbian. You count. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, and if they want to invest in this industry, it's important that they answer your questions and they also support a game plan for you to keep that IP here. Uh, it's so important. We're all about building IP. We have to keep you here. We don't want you leaving. That would, that would be the worst case scenario. Thank you. And I know, don't, don't, don't hate me, you guys. We've got, to, we've got to wrap it up. So if there's any of you in the line, just, just let me just say, that, that have suggestions, please use, uh, you know, use our Facebook site to, uh, to, to get at us, okay? Thank you very much. Yeah, yes? We just want to say thank you. Well, we're, we're acting students at Vancouver Film School. And um, yeah. yeah, this is this is kind of like uh, a film production anonymous. When you say your name, you get an applause, which is wonderful. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say thank you. I came out all the way from Germany just to be a part of this. Oh, no. oh well, yeah. thank you. So please, let's not stop fighting for our future. Well, we, we, we that's what we do in this business. We survive and we fight. Thank you. Yeah, that's thank nice. You. Yes. Um, my name is Tyler Russell. I run the Cafe for Contemporary Art at 140 East Esplanade, just down the street from here, and. I'm, I'm here tonight um, to support you because of how much you guys support, support us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there, there's a lot of people in this room tonight who, who, who drink lattes at our cafe, who, uh, who enjoy our fantastic tacos, and some people even collect some art from us. And, and, and it means a lot. Um, and, and I think, I, I, I think it, it, would, it, would, it would make sense that tons of business people would support you guys. And like, like, how valuable is it to have had a famous actor sleep in a particular bed? It, you know, that means a lot <laughs> to a hotel. Depends on the actor, well, right? Okay, depends okay. on the actor, Check depends on, on the bed. But you know what, it, or actress, but it, it means so much. And, 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 you know, it, for me, it's a joy to support, um, to support the, the, this, and, and, and I'm, my core interest is in supporting the arts. But this, um, uh, this industry just means so much to us. In, in my second year in business, uh, there was a group of people, and it was a real struggle for us, a real struggle. And there was a group of people who came in and said, oh, we got a lockup just around here. And they wouldn't tell us what film they were with. They wouldn't tell us, you know, what they were doing. But that was probably about 70 or 80 transactions a week. And that was huge to us at that time. So if, if this industry left this town, it would really be devastating. Um, and, and so I, I want you to stay, and I want Canada to get its, or not, not, not just BC, but I want BC to get its fight on. You know, keep it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to leave you with a story. Um, many of you are probably familiar with this story, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, in the early 1990s, um, I believe it was President No Tae-woo um, in South Korea. Um, he was looking at how much money uh, Jurassic Park pulled in. Now, Jurassic Park pulled in more money than Hyundai exported in cars. And he said, wait a second, I think I'm going to invest in film." And they turn things around. Now, everybody here is probably familiar that with, with how successful Korean film has been across Asia and how their TV industry is massively successful. And you all know Gangnam Style. And it, <laughs> it, it is because Korea got its cultural fight on and it has had massive impacts for their economy, not just for their film and TV industry itself, but it has had spin-off effects, because we now respect Samsung. We would not have respected Samsung if we would not have respected Korean film and cultural industries. The things go hand in hand. And, 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 I, and, I, and I would like to know that that message is being communicated to our leaders by you guys. Now, no to you, the, the Korean guys, they study hard. They're really smart. So they put these things together. Now, we really need to communicate this stuff to guys like Stephen Harper and, and to, to Christy Clark. Um, and I just want to know that that, that is, uh, is, is being communicated in the strongest of terms. Well, it will be. It will Thank be. Thank you. Thank you.
And, and I had a pony, so, so let's not even go there, Hyundai pony, so we won't go there. Yes? Hi, uh, my name's Shauna Tingey. Uh, I am a uh, documentary producer, a VFX coordinator, and I'm married to Matthew Tingey over there who helped create Save BC Film. Um, and first of all, um, it's been really insane in our house this week, let me tell you that. As, as Wayne's chuckling because he knows it's true. Matt has spent days just not eating until I get home and I've been working 12 hours a day because we're finishing a film at my studio right now. Um, and I have to work because I'm the, only, I'm the one working out of, of, out of the two of us right now. I'm the breadwinner. And that's really hard on him because that man is a workaholic, much like most of you in this room. Uh, you know what? I take that back. All of you in this room are workaholics. And I just wanted to say that I think it's really, really important that we don't let the, the rhetoric and uh, of the BC government and of the public get us down because I've heard people say that we're just looking for a handout, that we're whiny and entitled and we're just a bunch of rich producers who just like want stuff. Are you kidding me? And like Chrissy Clark with his race to the bottom stuff, this is unacceptable. We are a, a valuable industry. Not only do we bring in lots of money, to this province. We are taxpayers of this province. And we provide entertainment and education for members of this province. And so I'm so glad that this is happening. I'm not surprised that it's happening, but I'm so glad that it's happening because we have to fight for this. Now, if any of you know what happened to Saskatchewan, they did fight for it and they did go down. But we are not going to let that happen, and this is the start of that. So I just want to say thank you to you guys. And um, my question is, I know there's been a lot of information flying around tonight, so I was wondering if you could kind of succinctly kind of tell us what the game plan is again, because honestly, I've forgotten. The, you, the, the game plan. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, who, who? Okay, did, does someone want to just uh, uh, do, do the wrap up on the message? Okay, go ahead. Okay, the wrap up on the message. First of all, uh, I think the big part of this is really we create BC. Let's get engaged. Let's tell our stories on that website. Um, let's make sure this is an industry people understand and appreciate and that the government understands uh, through, a, through the website. The specific asks from government, um, we need to get closer on the tax credits. Uh, we need to get um, within 5%. That's what we're working on. Um, we need to get the exemption on the PST. Um, those are direct things, but this is an ongoing, uh, this is something ongoing and we've got to celebrate the creative industries and, and, and develop, create a strategy. And the other big thing, of course, is we've got to make sure that our numbers are right. Um, you know, I, I'm tired of arguing that, you know, of the value of this industry in this province. Um, you know, I think it's pretty self-evident, but we want to prove that by numbers, and we want to make sure that we get the numbers right. So those are some of the things that we're going to be working on in the near term. And, and uh, going forward, we had heard some great ideas here tonight, and we're going to certainly act on those. And uh, I really thank you for all your input. It's been uh, really positive, and, uh, um, you know, we, we take it really seriously. So thank you. Uh, again, just, uh, we're, we're running up against the clock here. Is it, now, would, would it be rude? Say what? Africa, I need to say this. It's from Africa. Oh, from Africa? Yeah, you have only one person, maybe a few African. I think I deserve that two minutes from you. Oh, sure, Don't you're from I Africa. Don't I deserve that minute? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. from North Vancouver, but you're doing that African thing. Come on. Oh, no, I'm not from... <laughs> anyway. I thank you so much. I know it's a wrap up. I was praying that I don't get locked out without saying this. I moved from Africa, Liberia, West Africa in 1999. I grow from a family that is diplomats. They all work in with IMF or medicine, doctors, and I decided I want to be an actor. My father said, I can't believe you. 
With all the money I spend on you, I went to MGU, Russian University. I speak five international languages. His, I went to UBC, I did social science and politology. But again, I went to Vancouver Film School. I finished, I graduated in 2003. And still, he's saying, where are you going to give up? I still have to send you money at this age. And you can't still pay your bills. What kind, of, what kind of thing is that? The reason I'm telling you this is that because we had a civil war in Liberia, my family moved to Paris, which is great because I grew up in, no offense, I grew up in a very cultural environment. Yeah. I think the, pro the problem in this case of uh, BC industry of film or TV shouldn't be just an individual base where we say, Oh, go write your own script, be your own director. This is a matter of the state. This is the children, the next generations. What is left when hunger is there? When I remember when I was a little girl, my mom can't even feed us. We had nothing. The only thing that could keep us going was the story she told us. We could stand up through the night, through the flames of that, those things. We listen to our stories. We sleep. The next day, we don't even really remember we were hungry. I don't think it's enough to just say, everybody go do your web series, and then you tell stories about guns, and, and what are we teaching our children? You need culture. You need people that when they see BC in the films, they cannot sit on their bums because they're so itchy to take that plane and visit that place. That's what you need. You need a government to say, my children, they can get up in the morning and go, okay, I'm going to the museum today. The museum of this movie. The museum of this director from Canada. We can't wait always for the state to tell us what to do or how to eat or what, how, what accent we should talk, which language we speak. We are multicultural. We're not multi-part. Therefore, we should have a, 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 our... Our creation should re reflect our industry and our culture, and that will happen only with what you do. It. So I'm so thankful. I even sent this email. When I saw it, I thought it's a scam. I sent it to my dad. I said, look, dad, <laughs> soon enough, I'll, I'll take you to this country, and you'll be glad I was here. Why? Because there is something that is happening, a movement. I am standing. I'll be there. I speak French. If you need French, Je parle français comme tu ne sais pas. Just let you watch it, Paruski. Ya gavari Paruski. Ya show gavari. Just let you be a nouge, na show the daylight. Si tu veux, je veux te parler en toutes les langues que tu veux, dont le gouvernement a besoin. Si tu es un français, je suis là, je serai là, je vais supporter. On a besoin de culture, ce n'est pas seulement la langue. Ce n'est pas seulement. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, I get, I, well, oh. th thank you so much so for sharing your passion with us. Fight for the culture, okay. not just. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Si, not bad. Okay, now over here, guys, you're killing me it's here. I love you. I love you so much, but we're killing us here. Could you maybe do a group question? Is that possible to do a group question? Yeah, yeah. Please. Okay, okay, okay. Yes, quick. I'm a t I'm a t my name is Carmela Evangelista. I'm a talent agent for over 20 years. I have one thing to say. Art never dies. Money circulates. We need to paint that picture. You stop it, it's not going to it's not going to go around. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Now, I, I know so some of you are leaving now, but please do me a favor. When you go and you get involved in our website you t and, and, and the Facebook site, you take a look at a little area there, and what we're going to do is have a list of all the wonderful sponsors that made this night possible. Please do me a favor, and when you look at those sites, get a chance and read those sponsors, because without them, honestly, this wouldn't have happened either. Okay? And I think, yes? One, yes? Okay, we've got one more question here. One more question. Hi guys, uh, my name is Mike Adams. I'm a screenwriter in town. Well, everyone will like the screenwriter. You can get work here now. Okay, now. But I began my career as a PA in 1995. And I worked for 12 years as a camera assistant. And I wanted to say tonight that this industry saved my life. Because prior to that, I banged around in a workforce that I didn't understand and that didn't understand me. And it wasn't until I found the film industry that I found out that I could take my passion, my heart, my creativity, and I could become a productive, consuming, uh, good person for society. I pay my taxes, and I love what we do. Thank you. Thank you.
One last thing. Yep. I loved our long-term strategies, guys. I'd love to find out if there's a way I can help uh, or any of us can help in building that uh, ministry that helps protect us in our government. What steps do we need to take? How can we help as individuals? Okay, thank you. So I want to th thank you very much. And, and again, we're going to be walking. If you want to talk to us on the, on, on the way out, you know, pigeonhole, grab us, talk to us. Thank you so much for taking this, this time, this evening out of your life to share with us. A great, great time. Thank you very much.